Hey there guys and welcome to another Crytam photography video. I hope you're all doing well. Um, today I kind of wanted to talk about a particular image that I shot recently um, and actually to share some um, tips on how to really push Snapseed to its editing Photoshop editing potential. Now, as you know, um, Snapseed has been around for a long time and they introduced a lot of features. And one of the most important features of this app happens to be the double exposure tool. Now this allows us so many possibilities to actually create and add things in that wouldn't be able to do unless you had some pro level editing software. So I recently did this image of um, a dragon and some fire coming from the dragon. I added in some motion and some smoke, but I did this only using Snapseed. So during lockdown, I entered into a, a lockdown photography challenge being run by none other than Mike Brown, who is one of my favorite uh, t photography teachers here on YouTube. Um, and he has uh, kindly sort of invited everyone into this nice group and community where everyone can kind of share their images and share their ideas and things like that. And he has a challenge every week. He puts out a theme and everybody kind of tries to interpret the theme and come up with something interesting, something fun, something new. And um, he critiques it every uh, every week as well. So it's a great little um, idea and uh, I've been loving it and been entering every week, trying to rack my brain for the next crazy um, interesting image. Funny enough, I had the pleasure of meeting Mike uh, about a year ago, I think, at the NEC in Birmingham. Um, I met him on my way out and we had a good long chat about um, using, you know, very cheap gear. That's all you need really is just a camera and a lens and just to go out there and take photos. So it was really nice to uh, meet you and thank you very much for critiquing my image. Okay, without further ado, let's get to this tutorial. There's one thing that I need to make clear that we are going to have very different settings in terms of what you're shooting, what you're editing. Um, and one of the first things you need to think about before you even go out and take the photograph is what elements do you want to add to the photograph? It's going to make it interesting. It's going to make it eye catching. And what things do you want to include? It's mainly related to your particular image. So yours and mine are going to be completely different, but hopefully this will give you an idea of how to actually use this app in order for it to make it work for you. So in terms of what angle you shot at, it's gonna also affect the image that you're gonna bring in. Make sure that you select an image with a black background to be added in as your element to your photo. You can find images like this all over the internet or you can simply create your own. Okay, so for example, I've got here my dragon image that I did. It's not fully edited yet. Um, and I'm just showing you very basically how to use the double exposure app and how to bring in the fire and all the other little bits. Okay, so I want to add in the fire. I want to add in the streaks of motion and also to make it look as realistic as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just hit the uh, pencil icon in the middle there and just bring it down to where it says double exposure and just tap on that. And you'll be brought with this little menu at the bottom. The first one that's uh, lit there is the, the picture with the little plus sign. So you're gonna add an image and now you're gonna pick the image that you want to overlay on top. So I want to add the fire. Okay, now when it loads the image in, you're going to have to pinch and zoom and adjust it to where you want it. So you can actually uh, make it bigger or make it smaller just by pinching it and zooming. Okay, so I wanna line it up so the fire is actually coming out of his mouth. So I've actually shot it in such a way that the fire and the dragon are in the same plane. Okay, and as you can notice, straight away the image is really dark and that's because the opacity of the black layer is still there and we need to get rid of that. So in the middle of the settings there, you'll see there's this little like book. It looks like a little book icon thing there. You want to just tap on it and it's going to bring up this new little menu. 
And the first thing you'll see there is default, lighten, darken, add, subtract, and overlay. Now these are all different effects. You can tap and play with these, but the one that you really want to use is lighten. So when you tap lighten, this removes that black background. The image just remained with just the fire there. And once you're happy with that, where you've placed it, hit the tick. There's also this brilliant little paintbrush uh, thing called brush. So if you go back into the menu and just hit that brush, now, as you can see, the fire coming out of his mouth doesn't look very realistic at all. It looks very dark. It doesn't look like it's emanating from his, his body. If you've watched any Lord of the Rings or any of those films, fantasy films where you've got a dragon in it, um, you will always see there's always that little buildup of fire and it comes out. So this is coming from the dragon's belly or whatever. And you want to see that. So I'm going to add some fire into it. So I'm going to select that paintbrush one and I'm going to select exposure because I want to lighten up that area. And what this allows you to do is if I zoom in as much as I can there, you can actually paint in the exposure. But before you paint the exposure, just look at the bottom where you've got these two arrows, one going up, one going down. And in the middle, you've got exposure. You want to up that to one stop of exposure. Okay and just paint in those areas like so i'm also going to do his eye because i want him to look like he's under some sort of spell okay and i'm also going to just lightly put some light on his uh, neck there his body okay now if you make a mistake all you need to do is tap the eye and it will show you where you've actually affected the image if you want to just tap the eye again it takes you back to what you're seeing so i'm going to tap the eye again and i can see that i've accidentally tapped into the grass oh i've done it again so as you can see i've made an accident there i've added into the grass all i need to do is just tap down to where it says erase exposure and just paint with my finger to get rid of the area that I, I don't want to use. So you can actually go back and clean up and take a bit more time than I am today. Now you see that you've got that nice little exposure going on, but it still doesn't look realistic. So what's missing? Right now I can see there's this bright orange red fire coming out of his mouth and on his body you can sort of see this white light. So we need to fix that. We need to add in some warmth to actually show the fire is affecting, is rippling off his body. That's what you want to see. So I'm going to go back into that brush menu again. This time I'm going to select temperature. So once you select temperature, uh, 10 being the warmest and minus 10 being the coolest. So I want to just zoom in and I'm going to do this for the eye, the mouth and the skin as well, because I want to add some warmth into his mouth there. I'm going to do the same for his eye. And the same for his scales. Now, depending on the color, you can uh, obviously redo the effect again it's just a case of rinsing and repeating until you get to what you want so it's still not uh, orange enough so I'm adding a bit more temperature and look at that Now the mouth of the dragon still isn't um, emanating as much. So I'm going to add a bit more exposure. So just a case of you going back in and just adding more exposure there. Add a little bit into the fire just to, maybe not too much there. Just 
like so. Now the dragon is looking like he's a proper real dragon. Um, so that is one of the very, very simple little tips and tricks that you can use to actually make your fire belong to the image. And you can do the same to the, the guy on the highlights of the little soldier with the, the morning star weapon thing. He can have uh, a bit more warmth as well and a bit more exposure um, and maybe even add some to the ball as well just to sell it even more. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is to add some motion. Now, motion is very difficult to add to a very static image. Um, and I did have uh, a number of um, failed attempts at trying to do this, but I found the best that works for me is adding in some streaks. Now, in order to add streaks, I, I'm not very good at painting with my fingers. So I found an image on a stock website, just like I found the fire and the smoke. Um, it's just rain, literally just rain. And if you put it at a diagonal on the image, you can erase and paint in the streaks where there's highlights of the body movement. And that makes a huge difference to the image. That's what I was going for. And that's what I wanted to feel. I want to feel there's some action going on here. So what I did was just hit the tick. And now I go to double exposure again. And then I pick the uh, rain image that I've got here. And the same thing, that's all you need to do is just go to the settings and just go lighten. And it adds in the effect for you there. It just takes out that black background and then it's just a case of you lining up. I want to give this effect more so to the knight with uh, the shield because he is the one that's swinging the mallet, uh, swinging that uh, weapon it's called. I think it's called the Morning Star. I'm not 100% certain. So if you know what it's called, let me know in the comments below. Okay. And once I'm happy where it is, I'm just going to hit that tick again. Now, don't worry. Don't freak out now. This is what I was talking about this tool. So you can actually go back in and paint just the areas that you need. So if I look at the top there, you've got this little arrow over these two little layers. Um, if I tap on that, it brings up another menu. You want to hit view edits. So this allows you to see all the different edits you've made to the image so far. So you can go back in and change things or get rid of that particular one. Like, no, it's not working. Or you want to change and make it stronger. You can do that from the view edits option. Now in the double exposure at the top, that's the last effect I put in. So it will always go in order of what you've done. So I'm going to tap on that double exposure and it's going to bring up this little menu. You want to tap the paintbrush because the paintbrush is going to allow you to paint in the effect. The first option you'll see there is the settings. So you can go back in and change um, that setting that you had before if you wanted to subtract or overlay or whatever you want to do. But I want to use the paintbrush um, in the box option because this allows me to paint onto the image the effect where I want it. So I'm just going to tap that. As you can see, it disappears from the image. So you can just zoom in and I can just paint in the effect to give it motion. And I'd say it's done a pretty good job of getting some motion. And maybe I can add in some motion with the soldier as well. Maybe a tiny bit with the dragon, not too much. I don't want to make it look like it's uh, too much there. And that's basically it. And then following that, you can edit and add in things like smoke um, and play with all the different effects that you can find. And yeah, just have fun with it. Okay. so. Following this, now you can do the rest of the editing that you want to do. There's also some dodge burn options that you can do in there, but I'm not going to get into that today. If you want a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a separate tutorial on dodging and burning. Hopefully that's helped you guys understand the power of this app and what you can do. So that's all from me. Hopefully you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching. 
uh, take care and stay safe and uh, yeah guys I'll see you in the next one cheers bye